Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you're doing well. If you're new here, a huge welcome to you. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. Are you ready for a little bit of sparkle and a little bit of glam? If you like that beautiful jewelry set in the intro, you're going to like today's tutorial. And they're actually pretty easy to make, so if you're a beginner, this is the tutorial for you. Now we are going to be doing some simple loops, and if you've never done those before, you may have a little bit of trouble. But if you keep practicing, you know what they say, practice makes perfect. But anyway guys, I made those pieces using the beads from the GGC Treasure Bag, her latest edition, which came out I think about four weeks ago. And if you're not familiar with the GGC Treasure Bag, I'll leave a link down below to the website. It's not a subscription, it's actually a limited edition. It comes out once every couple of months, and I have to say, it sells out almost immediately after it comes out. Now I'm not gonna do an unbagging today because I've already done that. I'll link that video down below. So if you're interested, please check that video so you can see what else came in that bag. I love the GGC Treasure Bags, I've never been disappointed. Every single one of them has been absolutely gorgeous. Now for those of you who don't have the beads, I will leave a list of all the materials down below in the description section of this video. If you'll scroll down, you'll see it. You may have to click on some that says show more or something like that. It all depends on what device you're using, whether it's a tablet, a smartphone, or your computer. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because a lot of people don't know where it is. The description section is usually collapsed and you need to click on show more in order to expand it and see it. But anyway guys, I'm very excited about today's tutorial because we're going to be making three things a necklace, a bracelet, and a pair of earrings. And they're all relatively simple to make. Now before we get started, please think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so. And also, I would really love it if you would leave some comments down below and give me a thumbs up. And by the way, I always read the comments. I don't always get to respond, but I read every single one of them, and I really truly appreciate it. You guys are amazing. You say the nicest things, and it really does make my day. So anyway, I don't want to keep talking because I want to jump into the tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. And here we have the GGC Treasure Bag. This one was launched about four weeks ago. The name of this bag is Midnight Blue. And guys, this bag is so big, it doesn't even fit within the frame of my camera. But anyway, I'm not gonna do an unbagging today because I've already done one. And if you didn't see the video, I'll link it down below. And since there are so many contents in this bag, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the materials that we're gonna be using off camera and I'll be right back. And here are the items we're gonna be using from the GGC Treasure Bag. As you can see, we have this gorgeous smoke colored pendant. It's a faceted glass pendant and it measures 13 by 22 by 8 millimeters. We're also going to be using one of the rhombus chandelier components right here. It measures 35 by 33 millimeters. We actually received three. I'm going to be using one of them. I also have two kinds of beads. I have these beautiful deep aqua colored rondelle beads. They measure 6 by 5 millimeters. They're actually half gray plated, but you don't see the gray very much. It's pretty subtle, but it's going to go really nicely with the smoke colored crystals. I also have these faceted four millimeter rounds and the color of these is silver gray. And one of my favorite beads is this beautiful twisted teardrop bead. They're electroplated and they measure 14 by eight millimeters and they're super sparkly as you can see. I do have two toggle clasps, one for the necklace and one for the bracelet. And these are all the items from the treasure bag. So let me go ahead and pull out the other items now. I have some jump rings here and these are all in a gunmetal color and I have three different sizes. They're four, five and six millimeters in size. I have some gunmetal colored head pins and I'm going to be actually making eye pins out of these. I don't have any gunmetal colored craft wire, but if you do have it, I recommend that you use 20 gauge because we're going to be doing some simple loops today. And here I have a couple of ear wire hooks. These are stainless steel ear wire hooks. It's the only kind I use. If you want to use gunmetal colored steel wire hooks, it's up to you. But I find these more tolerable as far as skin sensitivity. I'm going to start by assembling the focal part of the necklace. As you can see, I removed the beads from the strands. I like to work on the focal part first and then the strands later. As you can see, I have my pendant and I also have a five millimeter jump ring. This jump ring is pretty thick, it's 19 gauge. I also have the rhombus component. Let's go ahead and start by attaching the pendant to the rhombus component. And we're gonna do it with this jump ring. Let me go ahead and open it up. Now if you'll notice the pendant has a rhinestone in the front and the rhombus is also one-sided so when you go to connect them you need to make sure you connect them the right way. I'm simply going to slide the loop of this pendant into the jump ring and now I'm going to connect the rhombus component. Let me close it up. So this is what it should look like. 
me show you the back of the component so you can see what I'm talking about. As you can see, it's flat in the back. So it's important that you connect it the right way. So now that we've connected the main pendant, we're going to attach some dangles from these two loops here. And for the dangles, we're going to use some of these beads. Let me show you. I'm going to load one of these deep aqua rondelles. And then one of these rounds. Just like that. And now I'm going to create a simple loop. So I'm going to grab the pin at the top of the bead like this. And you want to leave a little bit of space because you're going to kink that pin. Just like that. And now I'm going to cut off the excess pin. And this is where you need to decide how big you want your loop. I usually leave myself about 3 eighths of an inch. But if you want bigger loops, obviously you're going to have to leave a little bit more pin. And now I'm going to grab the pin with some round nose pliers, making sure that it's flush. Just like that. And now I'm going to loop it. You want to make sure you close your loop nicely and straighten it out if you need to. And these pins are rather thick, so it's a little bit challenging to loop them. But that's what you should have, something like that. So now let me do one more for this side. So here are my two dangles. Let's go ahead and connect them. I'm simply going to open up the loop like this. Hook it onto the rhombus component like this. And close up the loop. So there's one connected. And now let me connect the other one. Once again, I'm going to open up the loop. Hook it onto the rhombus component loop. And now I'm going to close up this loop. So this is what we have so far. So now we're going to build some beta components that are going to connect to these loops here. And that's pretty easy to do. The first thing I need to do is get rid of the head of this head pen. I'm going to kink the wire, leaving myself 3 eighths of an inch again. And now I'm going to grab the end with my round nose pliers, making sure that it's flush. And I'm going to loop it. Make sure the loop is nice and straight on your pin. Just like that. And now I'm going to load one of these 4mm rounds. And then one of the rondelles. And another 4mm round. Grab the pin, line up the bottom loop, kink it, cut off the excess, grab the end, and then loop it. Just like that. It's a good idea to straighten out your loops. Make sure they're facing the same direction. So I'm going to grab this one with another set of pliers. So there's one beta component. And now I'm going to create five more just like this. As you can see, I have built six of these components. And I also built two additional ones. Each one of these has two of the four millimeter rounds and you'll see why in a few moments. Now when you go to build yours guys, they may be a little bit different because of the size of the loops. You're going to have to determine how big you want the loops. 
My loops average about four millimeters across usually. I don't usually create loops bigger than that, but again, it's personal preference. So let me show you how we're gonna assemble this. I'm gonna connect two of these beta components together. So I'm simply gonna open up this loop, connect one to the loop, and then close it. Let me do another one. So here they are connected. And now I'm gonna connect these smaller components to these. So let me open up this loop. And close it. And now I'm going to make a little bit of a change to the orientation of these loops. I want one of these beta components to have loops that are facing the same way, but the other beta component needs to have loops that are perpendicular. And that's very easy to do. I'm simply going to grab the loop with my pliers and then with another set of pliers, I'm going to grab the other loop and turn them just like this. And you'll see why in a few moments when I go to connect everything. Let me do this one now. I'm going to connect the beta component that has the loops that are parallel to the rhombus component. So let me open up this loop and I'm going to connect it to this loop right here. As you can see, there are five at the bottom and one at the top. Let me close it up. So once again, you want the beta component that has loops facing the same direction connected to this loop. And then the other beta component has the loops that are perpendicular. Let me connect this one now. So this is what we have so far. And now we're gonna connect these two strands to that center loop. And once again, we need to change the loops of these beta components. So I'm gonna change the orientation on these beta components here, the ones with the four millimeter rounds. Let's go ahead and connect them now. I'm simply connecting both of them to this top loop. So this is what we have so far. This necklace is actually very easy to make. You just have to make sure that your loops are facing the right direction. And the reason I made these shorter is because of the way that I'm gonna connect them to the main strand of the necklace. You'll see in a few moments. It just helps the focal part of the necklace lay properly on your chest. If they were the same length as these, the focal part of the necklace would probably lay a little bit different on your chest. But again, guys, you need to experiment for yourself and see what looks good on you. So now we're going to connect some six millimeter jump rings to these loops right here. And that's the reason why we needed these loops to be perpendicular to each other. Let me just explain why. If you'll see on this component, the loops are vertical. This one's horizontal or parallel to the mat. And this one needs to be vertical because it's going to connect to the jump ring. If it was horizontal, it wouldn't connect properly. 
and that's true of the rest of them. So now let's go ahead and connect these two strands to the jump ring. I'm going to open up the jump ring. And now I'm going to slide it through this loop and this one, making sure I don't twist the strand around, just like that. And now let me close it. Let me give you a close up. This is what you should have. As you can see, the loops are connecting properly to that jump ring. And now I'm going to connect this jump ring. Once again, you want to be careful with how you connect it. Check it before you close that jump ring. I think it looks really nice so far. So now we're going to connect two of these twisted beads to the jump rings. And of course we need to create some eye pins. So once again, I'm going to create myself an eye pin by using my head pins. I'm going to kink the pin at the top, grab the end with my round nose pliers, loop it, load the twisted bead, Grab the pin at the top of the bead, line up the bottom loop, kink it, cut off the excess, grab the pin and loop it. Let me line up my loops. Let me do the same for this side now. So now that I've created these two components, we're going to connect them to the jump rings. Let me open up this loop. Hook it onto the jump ring, close it. And now let me connect this one. So this is what we have so far. I think it's turning out really nice. And now I'm going to create two more components. Each one's going to have one of these rondelles. So here are my two components. And don't ask me why I'm only using one rondelle. Sometimes when I design things, I make decisions based on my gut instinct, if that makes any sense. I just think having one of these twisted beads followed by an aqua bead at the top looks good. So let me go ahead and connect it. I'm going to open up this loop, hook it onto that loop and close it. Same thing on this side. So this is what we have so far. And believe it or not, we're almost done with this necklace. All we need to do now is work on the strands, and that's pretty simple. The strands are going to be made up of these beta components, and these are the ones that have the four millimeter rounds on each end and the rondelle in the middle. Mine measure about seven eighths of an inch, but again, it all depends on how big your loops are. If your loops are bigger, obviously they're going to be longer. And at this point, I'm not sure how many I'm going to build, but I'm thinking maybe 16, so eight for each side of the necklace. But more than likely, I'll need less than that. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and build them off camera to save time and I'll be right back. 
As you can see, I built my beaded components and I've already connected this side. So now I just need to connect these and that's very easy to do. It's the same thing we've been doing all along. I'm going to open up this loop, connect this component to it, close it up, open up the next one, connect another beta component, and close it up. Let me go ahead and connect the rest. As you can see, I've connected them, and now I just need to connect the strand to the necklace. So I'm going to open up this loop, connect it to this beta component, and close it up. I can honestly say this is a very simple necklace to make. It may look fancy, but it's easy to make. Here I have some 4mm jump rings and the toggle clasp. Obviously you can use a lobster claw clasp if you want to. Let me open up one of these jump rings. I'm going to connect the ring portion to it and now I'm going to connect it to one of these strands. I'm simply going to slide the loop right into the jump ring like this. And now close up my jump ring. So now I'm going to connect this side. I'm connecting the bar portion of the toggle clasp. And now I'm going to connect it to this side and close it up. Let me do up the clasp and then I'll show you the necklace. Let me just arrange my necklace nicely here. Tell me that's not adorable. I absolutely love the combination of the deep aqua and smoke colored crystals and the gunmetal components really complement those colors. So now that we've made a necklace, we're going to go ahead and make the bracelet. Let me get those beads and I'll be right back. Here are the beads I'm using for the bracelet. These are the twisted teardrop beads. As you can see, I've already loaded them on pins and connected them. And these are just simple loops, just like we've been doing all along. I thought I would do it ahead of time to save time. Since you've already seen the process, I didn't think I needed to show you again. But as you can see, I simply connected each one of them. Now one thing you need to pay attention to are the loops at the ends. You need to be able to make sure they connect properly to the clasp. And I'm going to be using some jump rings. So I want these loops to be parallel to my mat, which they are. Here's a toggle clasp and two 5mm jump rings. Let's go ahead and open up one of these jump rings. I'm going to connect the ring portion to the jump ring and now I'm going to connect this end of the bracelet to the jump ring and close it up. Let me open up this jump ring now. I'm going to connect the bar portion. And now I'm going to connect it to the bracelet and close it up. I love the sparkle of those crystals, I really do. Now to tie the whole thing in, I thought I would add a little charm that has the deep aqua color. So I made a little charm using the deep aqua rondelle and I did add one of the four millimeter rounds on top of that. And it's on a head pin. I'm going to use another five millimeter jump ring to connect it just to give it a little bit of movement. I could connect it just like that, but it'd be a little bit too stiff and it wouldn't dangle very well. So let me open up this jump ring. Connect the charm to it. 
and now I need to decide where to connect it and I think I'll connect it to this jump ring right here let me close it up and then I'll show you these are really tough jump rings So here's what it looks like, very easy. And I think this bracelet is adorable. Of course you could add as many charms as you wanted to, but I wanted to make something very simple and quick for this tutorial. And here's what it looks like. I think it's really cute. I really love the sparkle. I love the facets of these crystals. Now keep in mind that my wrists are very small, so you may need more beaded components. I have a total of seven, and this bracelet measures about six and a half inches by the time you do up the clasp. So you may need a different number of beaded components. It all depends on how big you want your bracelet or how long you want your bracelet. Let's go ahead and move on to the earrings now. And here are the materials for the earrings. As you can see, I've already assembled one of them. I used a twisted teardrop bead. I also used the deep aqua rondelle and the 4mm faceted round. Nothing fancy guys. Whenever I make a fancy necklace or a statement necklace, I like to keep my earrings simple. And I've already built the components as you can see. This one's on a flat head pin and this one has two loops. Let's go ahead and put it together. I'm going to open up this loop, connect this component. Close up the loop. Open up this one now. Connect the EOI hook and close it up. It couldn't be any easier. And I think they look very nice and they're going to go really well with that necklace. Let me bring out the necklace and the bracelet and I'll arrange everything on my mat. Well, here's the full set and I did make one little change. I actually added another one of these beaded components. So instead of having six on each side, I actually have seven. After I put the clasp on, I took the necklace to the mirror and realized I needed to make it a little bit longer. Usually I do that before I add the clasp, but I completely forgot this time. But that's the beauty about making your own jewelry. You can make changes whenever you want to. So anyway, guys, I thought it turned out really lovely. And even though this is a statement necklace, it's actually a little on the dainty side. I think it's because the beads are pretty small. You'll see in a few moments when I put it on how different it looks, but I'm pretty happy with the entire set. I think it looks lovely. I think it's very elegant and very sparkly. I hope I've inspired you. I hope you can make your own. So now what I'd like to do is put this necklace on and show you what it looks like. So let me do that and I'll see you in a few moments. Well, what do you think? Isn't it lovely? I really like this necklace. I really do. As you can see, it's not very big. It's actually a little on the dainty side, even though it's a statement necklace. And I really love this bracelet. I think it's gorgeous. I love the sparkle. I'm a big fan of dark metals and sparkly beads. I just think that's such a nice combination. I think I've mentioned it before. I like dark metals better than silver and gold, but of course it depends on the occasion and it depends on what kind of clothing I'm wearing. And I guess the season matters as well. I like to wear the lighter metals in the summertime. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I hope I've given you some ideas. I hope you can go out and make your own necklace, bracelet and earring set. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.